Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Welcome to the GSD Podcast. Getting it done. Services, success, and software. We'll talk with the pros that have been in the trenches. Getting service teams off the ground. Launching new types of groups to service customers. Or running agencies that don't have a product attached to it. For the pros, by the pros. This is the GSD Podcast. And this is your host, Jeff Kushmerick. All right, I'm here with the man, Jay Nathan. How you doing? What's up, Jeff? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. So if people don't know, uh, Jay and I have known each other for a couple of years now. Uh, yeah. I th- and I think it was through Game Grow Retain. I think that's how we, we connected. So, uh, so. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't. You know who it was? What's that? It was um, the first time I heard your name was from... Uh, somebody was swearing, obviously. Well, was, yeah, somebody was cussing and saying <laughs> your name. Uh, it was... Um, Oh my gosh, I'm looking at his face from he left Medallia just recently. Oh, was, Scott Roth. Scott Roth, yeah. That that's how I was first introduced to you. He intru- I think he introduced us. Oh, he might have. Yeah, yeah. Scott's a great dude. Uh we worked yeah, together is. at Indeca together. And there's a podcast that you can go listen to with Scott. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um great. So uh, so Jay's obviously a very learned man and many things customer success with a with a huge background that you heard about. Um, but today's topic, you know, we always want to talk about something that, that the guest is passionate about and Jay was passionate about scaling customer success with community, right? So that's what we're going to talk about. And I will tell you this, I will admit I am like dumb, like D U M dumb about D-U-M. community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's my, my South for you, right? There. I'm dumb. D U M about community and, and then i went through and i listened to your podcast with brian and brian obinger for you know because jay's got uh, his own podcast with ggr and jeff and christy um i'll admit i was a little bit of a dog watching tv listening to that <laughs> <podcast as well. laughs> that's, that's good feedback we probably need to need to figure out how to simplify it a little bit i just feel like i was <laughs> supposed to walk into like uh bio 101 and i walked into like a doctor at 502 level oh wow well <laughs> brian yeah brian's a really smart dude and he's been doing community for a long time <laughs> this That's is nothing that. against you guys i i just uh, I, I i'm glad i learned something new is what is the way <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what you could gather from it no I, I think it's a good point um I think, you know, there's some people who have, have been in the community world for a very long time. Yeah. And it's probably like customer success people who have been in customer success for 15 years and they're talking to somebody in engineering or product <laughs> management or sales. And they're like, so what do you do again? But, um, and so I, I've had to come up this learning curve a little bit as well, but it, it actually isn't that complex. So maybe we can simplify it as we chat a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think maybe the... It, I'm sorry, did I cut you off on the like the whole not thing? at all, and um, okay. and I uh, mistakenly had not turned off Slack notifications, so the worst sound in the world just popped up. So I didn't hear it. I didn't. Oh, hear good. It. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and that's authentic anyway. That's good. Um, so, but I, so maybe maybe we'll start this way. Do do you believe, Jeff, that if you look back at the 15 years since customer success has come of age, do you feel like it's been built the right way? Oh, I think you know my opinion on that. <laughs> I, I I feel like it was done with great intentions, but it was not built in the right way. Yeah, I, I, I sort of agree with that. I agree a lot with that. Yeah. Um, if you sort of rewind the tape, the tape, because we're older, yeah, uh, yeah. the 15 years ago, customer success was really born because um, we had data that we didn't used to have on our customers. Because if you recall, kids, everything's on premise. There's no telemetry. There you go. That's it, right? No, no, no data. Couldn't see what our customers were doing. Couldn't see if they were using it. All we knew is we were charging a hell of a lot for professional services, and they were paying for the software up front, yeah. not quarterly. Three, not three years, and then every three years, uh, a BMW would roll up at the client site with a renewal contract. That's right, and in like a whole team full of people, right? I was on those teams. I know how it went. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> As I said, just make sure that you got the big M M&M and M cookies, and you're good. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So. I think um, what what started is a very noble thing, which is, hey, we've got a bunch of data that we now actually can see what all of our customers are doing. We should set up an operation to monitor that data, 
figure out who's making it and who's not, however that looks for your product, whatever that looks like for your product, and intervene proactively. That's what customer success was in the early days. Yeah, no, that's now, what I remember. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. fast forward 15 years and now we've got, it's the primary relationship manager. It's got account management. It's got revenue ties. It's got customer experience responsibility. Like I hear people all the time say like they're responsible for the end-to-end customer experience. Well, that's sort of a problem, right? Because yeah. if, if you make your entire customer experience dependent on a person, it's going to fail. No, oh, 100%. Yeah. At some point it's going to fail. Um, so I, I think we, you know, as I look at the, take a, take a step back from this whole industry, which I've been very invested in, as you know, and you have too. Um, I think we have some, we, we have an opportunity to sort of lean it up and tighten it up, really, really clean up what customer success has become. And I think the foundation of that is um, it's really starting with your product, a great product that, so that's the most scalable customer success that you can provide, right? Great product that does what it's supposed to do. That's simple to onboard, keeps customer effort very, very low. Second to that is um, self-service resources. I have been rereading a book called The Effortless Experience. Oh, nice one. Yeah. You know this book? I've got yes. it on my desk to prove yeah, there it is. It. I've even dog-eared pages in it, Jeff, like in written notes in the margin. Oh, so you actually read the books too? Well, I don't usually, but I had this one on my shelf and I knew I had to get back into it because I read a couple of HBR articles by Matt Dixon and his team. Yep. And But the, the most interesting statistic in this book is that 81% of your... 81% of your customers who contact support are trying to solve a problem for themselves first. They yeah. actually don't want to talk to you. They just want to go in and figure it out. They want to solve their problem. And furthermore, there's really fascinating data in this book. Furthermore, you are four times more likely to leave a customer in a disloyal state if they do contact your support team than if they don't. Let that sink in. Okay. That means and in the converse side of that is that with a good customer service experience, you're only like one time, like one time more likely to have the customer advocate for you based on that service experience. So really? there's, there's huge, the, the let me net it out without yeah, these yeah. metrics. There's huge downside to people having to, to actually talk to a vendor and there's only limited upside, which means wow. this whole surprise delight kind of, <laughs> high empathy kind of model we've tried to create for customer experience. It's not building loyalty and it's not building, um, it's not building, it's not accretive to the business in any meaningful way. Interesting. I, generally uh, speaking, generally speaking. Yeah. So what that tells me is that as a product company, what I need to be doing as a customer success leader is first building self-service at scale, education, yep. collaboration, um, networking with peers who sit in the same seat as I do, right. As my, the rest of my customers do yep. uh, so they can learn from one another and people who are literally experiencing the same set of problems. If I'm a CSM, I'm not experiencing the same set of problems you are as a user of my product because your role is whatever it is, right. Maybe you're an HR. No, maybe. listen, I'm, I'm totally on board with this because back around I don't date myself here, but like 2007 or so, um, I was at Indeca, uh, which was a develop like is a developer product. You know, it, it powered all e-commerce like in the United States for a while, um, and and there was we put out the Indeca Developers Network, which was basically a discussion board yep. for developers, and people were like, w- like half the company was like, absolutely not. Everybody's going to go in and bitch about us. And everything, as you can, I know you're shaking it because you know where this went. It was wildly successful, um, and people were like, "Thank God, finally!" I just want to interact with people who do what I do, and like, what's the query parameter for the this, and how did you solve this problem? And then, actually, from I did get from that podcast. If your marketing team goes through there, there that's where they can get all of their data points on what they should be talking about. Okay, you already know more about community than you were letting on, Jeff. Like that, that's it. Right. It's, it's, and it's not necessarily only about reducing your workload, right? It's about creating an ecosystem that customers feel good about. Yeah. (laughs) And and, well, yeah. Okay. So we can get into the gang retain community later, 
But one of the things that Jeff and I have always tried to do in that community, the other Jeff, not you, Jeff, but <laughs> you think this way too, I'm sure is yeah, yeah. we call it being the DJ, not the talent, right? You bring the talent together in the community to help one another, to help the people who who don't have the talent yet. Absolutely. Get, guess who gets the credit for that? The brand that. DJ artist. So in this case, the, the community, the, the vendor. Yeah, exactly. The vendor, the vendor. That's right. The vendor who, who creates the environment for that collaboration and that learning and that help and knowledge transfer to take place. So it's really not a complex community is really not complex, but I, I think it's a fundamental part to scaling customer success. And it's different for every company, right? I, I was on the phone with one of our customers earlier. They're, they're a customer of ours, but they have like 500 really large customers. They serve high-end enterprise. Yep. And so they're like, you know what? We are always going to have a high-touch customer success model. That is our business model. They're yep. profitable. They've learned how to make that work, but they're not going to go have a no-touch segment in their yeah. business, right? Yep. Now, but the community still works for them which is cool, right? Because it's additive for them. But what I would do as a, as a new customer success leader, especially in 2023 with what we're facing, every company is looking at how to tighten up, you know, sort of you know, batten down the hatches for the next 12 months to see what happens. I would be thinking about building a scalable approach first, meaning I've got a solid knowledge base and that knowledge base has more than just product stuff in it, right? It's probably got best practices, you know, sample code yeah. if you're a development thing, but sample whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who's a really good example of this? Zendesk. Zendesk oh, has absolutely. always been very good at like self-start, self-serve stuff. Yep. Um, I'd have a, a community platform and I'd have a programming schedule where I'm running webinars for customers, webinars, sessions, um, different programs where I'm providing the type of information that people need so that if I'm a customer success manager, I'll tell you a story here in a second. Sure. I have programs that I can plug people into so that I'm not responsible for the entire customer experience. Cause we know that doesn't scale and there's quality problems. It fails at some yep. point. Right. Yep. I was on the phone. I did a, a QBR with one of my team members a couple of weeks ago. And as and this is us, like we're a community company, right? We should be yeah. the best in the world at this and we're still working on it. Yeah. But, um, you know, one of the things that, that um, I was taking notes as I do, you know, on these things, like feedback I wanted to give and that kind of thing. And one of the things that I noticed was even our CSM, she was doing a great job on this call, but she was like, oh, well, I'll have a follow-up call with you on this and I'll have a follow-up call with you on that. And but by the end of the call, like we had scheduled three or four more calls and I was like, oh man, like, what percentage of those follow-up actions could be community Video. style, one to me yeah. type of things? Like what if we said, oh, we've already got a webinar that, that happens on a monthly basis to go think about your community engagement strategy, right? You should go do that because you'll hear from other people when you're on that call that are doing exactly what you're doing. And we'll have somebody there who's going to give you the best and latest tips and tricks that we have. Would you differentiate that from your standard office hours? Um, yeah, I would. It's just a different program, right? Um, one, one of the, the uh, we did a podcast a few weeks ago with Pendo and yep. their scale customer success team. And they're doing this. That That is their mandate. And, yep. and uh, Erica Ackroyd actually chatted with her yesterday. Awesome person doing great work. Um, but what they did is they started with a pooled model for customer success. Okay. And pooled means it's a little bit like support. People might say it's not support, but it feels a lot like support. If you have a group of people and you've given your customers an email address to go contact that pool of people, and yep. then that pool of people picks up each email as they come in and handles the request, that's called customer support. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> right? round I mean, robin yeah, Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, but they flipped the model. They took all the data from that um, from that inbound stream of requests. And they said, okay, there's a lot of requests coming in for new user onboarding, right? Yep. A new user, a new administrator joins our customer's company. Maybe instead of doing five of these calls a week per CSM, do the math on that. Five, yeah. people, five times. Like Friday at 11 is a new user onboarding. <laughs> How many hours does that save them? Literally thousands a year at yeah. this point. That's what I'm talking about. So that that's a... That is a very specific program, a new user onboarding program. Yeah. That that way, every, and by the way, it doesn't just apply to the long tail of customers. It applies to enterprise customers because when an enterprise 
CSM is on the phone with a customer and they hear of a new user, you think they're going to sign up to go do a load? Oh, no. I, it's, I'm so glad you said that. We did an engagement uh, last year with a customer that was all white glove, high touch, you know, Fortune 10, you know, 50, you know, types of customer base. And then they started going into SMB. And, and that was one of the things that we said was like, well, this just, just doesn't apply to SMB. Like, why would you go and have this new user training data upload? Like, why would you, why would you, why would you, if you're going to record this once, why not like have a whole, if you have a curriculum around that, why not give that to your white glove people as well too, right? Like you yeah. can do it in a way where people are still going to get the, the love and care that they deserve, but yeah. And it comes back to this too, right? Yeah. Because if a customer is going to put the effort into getting on a call with you, you want to be able to guarantee the quality of that call. And if you have 30 CSMs or 30 anybody's running around doing the same thing, then you have a quality control management issue. Yeah. Right. But if I have one person running a new user onboarding program twice a month, yeah, I can control the quality of that pretty easily. If they if they need feedback, you give them feedback. They tweak it the next time. That's right. And then you don't have like, oh well, Bobby does it this way, but Joanne does it that way, and then conflicting information. They all yeah. get standardized down and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that solves the other issue. It sounds like of uh, what you always see is like, oh, okay, we've got 15 CSMs this year. We're going 2x next year in sales, so that means 30 CSMs, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's not scaling, by the way. Right? That's not scaling. The, the, scaling is not just adding more people linearly right. with the number. It scaling literally means you have to do more with the same amount of resources or yeah. do more with fewer resources work. relative to the inputs. Work so, smarter, not harder. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So so I you know, when I think about scaled customer success, I think about that kind of concept. Community isn't the only answer to that. Right. Because we're not talking about just the online community here, but um, I did a post about this yesterday. It, if w- one of the things that I found in my time as chief customer officer at Higher Logic, as I've talked to customers and I've talked to customer success people because I do that yep. often, um, I ask the customer success people or I ask the community people that are our customers, I say, how, how engaged is your customer success team in your community? And they're like, oh man, almost to every single time man, I wish we could get them more engaged. And I'm thinking, what a huge wow. missed opportunity for customer yeah. success teams to not be leaning on a customer community as part of their engagement and scale strategy. It's not the only answer, but it's a hu- it could be a, a, a huge resource to help take burden off of those people connect them with their peer, all the, all the, oh, yeah. that you've I, already I, described. I, I see this with, um, you know, I'm sure you're part of some of these groups and I'm not going to name them, but like, it's an executive sort of group where we were all in a community together and there's like the CSM that I'm associated with because it's based on my region is like, she's amazing. Like, Hey, I've got a person that's looking for an X. Do you know any knowledge? Who's, who's worked with a tech company that's done Y and also Z and stuff like, and using that community to help her customers out, right? Because at the end of the day, she's responsible for getting us to renew at this high ticket number. And we want to make sure that we see the value out of it. So, yeah. 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 And, and just think about the burden of training that goes down. <laughs> it's not just new user onboarding. It's everything else that has to go on. Because CSMs typically, especially when you're scaling rapidly, a software company, they're not coming from the industry. There's just not enough. Oh, There's subject just, matter. We need the subject matter expertise yeah. in our field. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. You, you can, you, the rest of the organization winds up saying, CSMs know nothing about our data intelligence platform analytic strategy. You know, right. it's like, <laughs> yes, exactly. So you literally... There's always this dichotomy in customer success. Do you hire people that are from the industry and have subject matter expertise? Like you just said, sorry, I'm talking really fast. And you told me you're, you're not talking fast. No, no, no. We're, we're, <laughs> don't worry. No, it's, it's just you're from the South. So you think talking my speed is fast. Okay. That's true. That's a good yeah. point. That's a very good point. We all know I'm the fast talking Boston guy. With yeah, the, that's right. It's half Italian hands waving around and everything. Well, like, I do the hand wavy thing too. I'm really good at that. <laughs> we have that in common for sure. Um, but yeah, so it's subject matter expertise, or do you hire for somebody with customer success experience? Well, increasingly, you just have to hire for somebody that's got some CS experience, and then you have to teach them everything about the subject matter. So, yeah, it's impossible. I, I feel that way as well. So you can always get them trained up on your your special Snowflake software. Like yeah. <laughs> training people to engage with customers and provide value is is a skill, right? Yeah, yeah, and even even the industry you can train people on. I mean, how many industry? 
it's sort of a consulting skill and you've been in consulting, I've been in consulting. So it's, it's easier, I think for us with some experience in that realm to go say, okay, I got to learn something new here, but you can quickly get to that. And if you create an enablement program for your team, then you can actually do that part really, really quickly. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Hey, so you might answer this then. Um, well, actually let's, 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 so I was curious what the ROI story to a CFO is, but it says it's, I feel like we talked about it in that whole two X the team aspect of things here. It's uh, yeah, that that's the that's the ROI story that we're trying to help our customers and our prospects build. Yeah, um, you asked another question too as we were prepping about the support community concept. Yeah. Really, if you think about customer communities, if you look back 10, 15, 20 years, they really started out as customer support communities, and and what the goal was there. It, like you mentioned, your developer community. Yeah, it was it in Deca. In Deca, yeah, that's where I worked with Scott. Yeah, I did. I did one very similar at Blackbaud, and part part of the goal there was to have all these answers sort of built up in an online absolutely. Community. You, you get the SEO it's, value, it's the classic, um, and it's also in a support term deflection, right? Well, you've that's it deflected you over to here, which has taken the human capital cost. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to talk like we're all widgets, but like, but that's exactly what you've done here. It's like, oh, we now you use AI, like, oh, we've got your answer right here in this knowledge base article right here. That, that's right, and it's it's not a matter of it's it gets back to that scale thing, right? Yeah. Because and it gets back to the effortless experience. Most customers don't want to call I'm you. I'm going to link right? to that book. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it, it, Do you have a referral fee I can put in there? Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I give it to Matt Dixon. He's the he's the brainchild behind it. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the 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 um, yeah. It, so uh, creating well, that that was the origin of, of community and B two B SaaS is really yeah. like let's challenge all the demand that we're getting in our support channel, which it it it's got its benefits if you think about it from the perspective of the eighty one percent metric that I threw out, right? It's yeah. not just about the company. It's actually a win-win for the for the customer as well. Um, but the way I think about our, so that ROI is pretty concrete, right? It's pretty easy to say, like we can challenge, we believe we can challenge this much of the volume that comes in today. We can give another channel, self-serve customers can find their answers before they have to call us. That means we have to staff fewer people in our contact center or our support center. Um, Easy, right? Yeah. So I started trying to think about how do you take the same concept and apply it to customer success? And it's almost the same kind of thing. Customers aren't necessarily looking, they are, <laughs> they're looking for training, they're looking for best practices, they're mm-hmm. looking for how does my peer do X, Y, oh, huge. Yeah. Like I remember implementing Indeca for Lowe's and they're like, Hey, what did you guys do over at, at uh, Home Depot? Right. Like, exactly. It's like, right. you know, they want to make sure they're in peer, in peer and then maybe leapfrog as well too. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. What are the benchmarks? Like what does good look like for this yeah. metric or that metric? Um, so, and, and then what are some of the answers to the problems that sit around the product, but not mm. our product issues, right? Like, this gets that feels like a community thing to me where it's like, we just built the product, like, and then people start having these other things that they're trying to use it for that, that, that mm-hmm. feels like a great community thing. Yeah. 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 Well, and um, like half the problems in software adoption actually don't stem from the software themselves. They send, they stem from something else environmental around the software. Maybe it's the way the people are organized. Maybe it's the other technology that's in the stack <laughs> that you have to go integrate with. Yeah. So it's, um, it's community begins to give you the opportunity to connect people, to talk about all those problems that aren't your product. But again, you bring them together, you get the credit for that. But so all that aside, ROI, right? See me talking with my hands? I'd do it. Um, (laughs) Maybe it's because I'm talking to you. Um, You're a chameleon. I am. am, You got to do that. It's called mirroring. Yeah. So, um, no, I'm not doing it on purpose. I promise. The the model is similar. Like again, it goes back to the how many calls do my does my CSM team need to have with our customers and follow up to our QBRs? Yeah. What are all those things? So if you can say, all right, our customer success team is doing all these activities today. If we can make these three or four things that are the biggest volume drivers for that team, reduce them, then it's not a matter of getting rid of CSMs. It's a matter of hiring fewer CSMs in the future. Absolutely. More with less. I, I, so. Every time I hear this type of a story, I remember 
I was at unknown software, unnamed software company, and um, we had to put in more recs for support people, right? And so we created this initiative of like, let's add up all these support requests and see if dev can go build some of these things because, and, and, and it was, it was change password, which is a very common thing, right? Like, and okay. basically we would have had to spend another $80,000 and this is a 2010 economics, but another $80,000 on two support reps because of the increase in volume that we expected with sales and the number of change password requests that would come in. So it's like, why don't we why don't you guys just take a sprint? We'll fix that. Yeah. Fix that. <laughs> Will it cost eighty thousand dollars? Maybe. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not. Hopefully not. But uh, absolutely. Oh yeah. no, that, that was so, that, so that, was that great. That's one side of the ROI equation for customer yeah. success. The other side is what is the intangible benefit of having an ecosystem that your customers see you at the center of? They're more loyal to your brand because you're giving them access to this ecosystem of people that look like them that can help them solve their problems. Again, it's back to the DJ, not the talent. Yep. You, you, so can, can you get your head around the idea that you could improve retention by a quarter of a point next year by having this kind of environment? That's pretty believable for me as a, yeah. as a chief customer officer. So that's part of the ROI story we tell to our customers as well. No, that's great. Cause it, it, for me, it, it feels like there's an ROI story and then there's this like, you just got to do it. Right. Like, and that's, that's how I felt about your other, your answer yeah. there, which is like, yeah, it's just the right thing to do. You know what I mean? So I, I was, I was on the phone with one of my customers literally right before I talked to you and you know what she said to me? What's that? Customer community is table stakes for a SaaS company. So there you yeah. go. There, there's your other ROI. Your competitors are doing it. No, that's awesome. You're not going to do it. Right. They just need one. And then you start moving to that industry. That That's yeah. great. So yep. I think we covered like, and now I feel a lot better about it, Jay. Like, uh, I feel like I could, I could, I could explain this a little bit more now. This it's is not great. rocket science. You know, <laughs> the, the, when you think about gang grow retain, I mean, you're close enough to GGR. Yeah. You've been a part of it. Um, it's all about content. It's all about putting people who have great ideas and who have done great work, putting them in the spotlight and letting them tell their story. It's, yeah. it's sort of a marketing kind of thing as well right yeah. like yeah, but what, what's better as a as a software vendor when somebody asks a question and another customer goes in and answers it you're like oh my god like there you best case scenario right there it's like get them on the stage at our next user conference right that's exactly right and that's the kind of thing that you can look for so you're actually touching on something else which is i believe one of the most important elements of customer success and maybe one of the most important is it advocacy? it's advocacy yes. right yes like, what do you think? Because I mean, I see a lot of marketing teams struggle to to work with their CSMs to say, "Hey, go recruit me somebody oh. that's done X, Y, and Z." Uh, like, I'm not gonna lie, and this isn't a pitch for my company, InfiniteRenewals.com. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> I always tell people my goal is not to increase your retention number. My goal goes beyond that, so that your customers are what I just said on stage at a user event talking about how much they loved. That's what you should shoot for, not for the renewal contract, but for these people singing their praises, getting on the phone and calling and when people are doing a reference check and all the G2 stuff and everything like that's, that's what you're shooting for. Yeah. And it's, it's them talking about your brand in places that you can't see either. I don't know if you follow Chris Walker on. Oh, maybe I should. LinkedIn. Oh yeah. You should definitely, they, they, Chris has this concept, his, his company's called Refine Labs and they've built oh, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know that. I mean, oh, actually he's in Boston. Boston. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, they're, they're I'm connected uh, with Meg, their COO. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. She's awesome too. The, uh, the whole concept there is this thing they call dark social, which is that the fact that buying has changed drastically yeah. since the whole HubSpot inbound model, love HubSpot, but yeah. the the model is different today. And word of mouth is more important than it's ever been because people are having conversations in private communities and like, one yeah. off, you know, we, Jeff and I are part of a, a very elite circle of people. <laughs> so we <laughs> that think, <one>. yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I will say for that very elite, <laughs> so funny. I wish I could talk about what we we're talking. We have like about. a chat group. That's yeah. it. Like it's like it, a. It started as chat. who's going to this bar during Pulse, right? That's how the whole yeah. 
thing started. Yeah, and it's persisted for six and months. And now it's like, what's good sauce? It is literally, if you ask a question in there and it gets answered, like, I am taking that as, like, the word of God. Like, that yeah. is, yeah. yeah. But that's where, that's dark social, right? That That's oh, yeah. places that your marketing team cannot see where people are talking about you positively or negatively. A lot of people, uh, one of the common questions we get in the sales cycle about community is, especially from customers that don't have one yet, yeah. is what happens when um, customers start bad mouthing you in your community or people say things that are undesirable about your product. Well, wouldn't you rather be able to see that and have some be able to go in and respond to it, right? To respond because yeah. if you if you go and read more about the psychology of of customer experience and service, you'll also find that it's not actually the bad things that happen in the process of using a product or working with a company. It's how the company responds to those bad things that's that yeah. really defines the experience for the customer. And actually, if you do have a problem and you resolve it, chances are you're in a better spot at the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you, you see these on either like a G2 or even like Yelp or whatever, just to make it a little bit more in the in the everyday life where, you know, I went to this restaurant and XYZ happened and blah, blah, blah. And then they get reached out to and they're like, we're so sorry. Here's 10% off, 20% off the next time, you know, and then suddenly like people feel better about it. But then you address it and it's not just hanging out there. And yeah. just like for people to read and just figure like, oh, I guess they just let it fly then. So absolutely. Yeah. They, were, yeah. they didn't even know about it, so they couldn't respond. So, absolutely. but wow. yeah. So anyway, there, there's, there's many facets of it, which I think, you know, the people that are in community deeply, I think it, it gets hard to explain it all because there are so many benefits as you start to unpack yeah. it. But to your question about ROI, support deflection is key. I call it customer success deflection or customer yep. success scalability is to me number two. And then from there, there's all these other benefits that sort of. Yeah, no, uh, accrue. that's, that's fantastic. I, I appreciate it. I mean, we could talk for hours, it's probably going on for, for uh, quite some time, but I, th I think you sort of resolved all of my, my community questions and, and yeah. boiled it down to, to, to what I was thinking about. Um, so let's, let's do this. Let's chat about you are a voracious reader, right? Guy. Yes. Oh, no, you're an audiobook guy. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So I I read by listening to books. That's what yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Like, yeah. So what is your non-business thing that you're listening to right now? <laughs> so, you know, I told you before, like the thing that I'm listening to that's not business is um, this guy named oh, Tom, yeah, yeah. Tom Bukovac. Yeah. yeah. Who's, who's a, who's a, he's a session guitarist. And for people who don't know what that is, like this is a professional musician who basically is a recording artist. You listen to like Taylor Swift and you hear amazing guitar riffs in the background is probably him. Like, yeah, it, yeah. literally probably this guy. He yeah. started a YouTube channel during the pandemic and it's just, it's got me, got me uh, mesmerized. And then I brought it up to you when we were having our pre-call and you're like, oh yeah, I know that guy. And I was like, oh, the, 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 the handle on his channel is based on like an effect pedal from like 20 years ago. It's like, Echo. I was wondering what that was. Yeah. Oh, it's an old delay pedal that he loved. So when he named his channel, which never thinking he was going to make videos about, but exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But, but you know, it's, so he gives a little guitar lesson, but he talks a lot about the business that he's in. He talks a lot about um, I mean, he lives in that. He's a Nashville recording artist, which is a whole universe into itself. I knew nothing about how any of that worked. And, you know, both of us have been playing guitar all our lives. Yep. <laughs> you know, we connected a lot of, and, um, and I all, he brings you into the studio. He shows you just tracking like, no, nope, screw up, go and do it again. Like, like, yeah, just watch it. Here's my effects. Yeah. So that's, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Stuff. It's, it's the, the thing that I love about it most, Jeff, is that it is, it's like on display picture of what mastery of a subject looks yeah. like. This guy, he's just, he's so deep into his craft that like he can't even see beyond it. it and so deep into it that he doesn't even think he's that good either. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's like, but, you know, but other guys, you know, be better, but yeah, exactly. It's inspirational, right? From just from that perspective to see somebody so deep into their craft, you're like, okay, like what's my thing? How do I get so deep into something? and know the nuance of it so well and yet can explain it so simply to people like that's what i aspire to so oh, that's awesome yeah yeah so that, that's it, my it, thing right now is, is there a, is there a business thing besides the effort is that effortless mastery is that the the, the book that you're into now or? Uh, well actually effortless experience that i've referred to like three times oh yeah yeah, yeah that one i am reading that because i'm actually writing my newsletter on that 
Okay. And it's, and it's coming out, it comes out every Sunday morning, but um, yeah, we'll put the link in the, uh, I'm sure everybody listening to this is a subscriber already, but we'll put I the hope. link in the podcast. Yeah. That would be awesome. Um, I'll tell you here, I'm looking at my audible account here on my yeah. phone right now. I've got um, influence by Robert Cialdini. I use a story in that. Have you listened to it yet? I use a story I'm, in that all the time. Bit. It's okay. the story. When I talk about charging for implementation, I talk about the story when that lady had these, um, like diamond, these crappy jewelry at like a Grand Canyon gift shop. And she told somebody like, oh, just price them down to get rid of them. And so she accidentally, I think, put an extra zero. So suddenly people thought a $10 thing or a 9.99 thing was like 900, whatever it was. They paid it, right? The, the, the perception of value was suddenly like, oh my God, it's worth something. I should buy it versus, oh, it's just crap. Who wants crap? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I got turned on to this by accident by somebody in on LinkedIn who made a comment yeah. on a post and I was blown away. Oh, so, it's a great book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's one. I started listening to how brands grow again by Byron Sharp. Yep. And then, um, okay, here's a really practical business thing that I'm reading. It's called delegation and supervision by a guy named Brian Tracy. And um, I was just, you know, I was over the holidays. I was thinking, there's some things I need to brush up on in terms of my ability to delegate and scale myself. Yeah. As a leader. That, that sounded pretty good. Delegation, delegation and supervision, a little bit old school, but some really solid concepts in there. So I don't know. No, that's what, I'll, put, I'll put the links in the show notes. Um, those are fantastic. Um, so Jay, I know we'll talk again. So let's do this for everyone. Where can people find you? We're going to put your LinkedIn profile. You okay. get a newsletter. Yeah. The newsletter is at customer success.io. Okay. And you can, I mean, I've got, what I did there, Jeff, is I pulled like 500 LinkedIn posts off there and I organized them and tagged them and categorized oh, nice. them. So, you know, if anybody's like seriously tired and can't go to sleep some night, you can maybe go check that out. 